All right, so for what we have, we create person class, right? <coughs> and person class pretty much just get in setters, just basic of person. And we try to use person class in the main here. Then we said we want to customize the input to have user interface. To enter username and, I mean, the user and the age at the same time like that so we use the J option pane and show option dialog right and to remove the button OK or button out so we just set the options to nothing in array and then make sure you set this to no because this is default selection on the button right and then pass that as the option in alright so now the next concept is when we hit the submit button it's supposed to take the text which is from JTX name and JTX age okay and then we can take those two values to pass into our person class and we create person right here person 3 to this this person and person to just testing our Person.java, it works fine so far. But now we're going to take the input from the user from the show option dialog, right? User interface. And try to take that to instantiate it. So the key is after you read in, you take the get text, right? And we want to print it out to test that if we can really read it in. After we can read it in, then we can just convert that. When you get the end, user enter from the J option dialog is always as text type we need to parse or convert to byte type because our person.java very much is going to take the byte right in the constructor here so that's why we need to convert that sorry now <coughs> let's come back that's why we convert byte and we can pass the byte in after that and the name, we just take the name and pass in. Now, <coughs> you need to make sure how you're going to get the text in here. So, we have to program the buttons, the <coughs> submit button that we created here, submit that we add to the panel, and how to program that. Like, if you look at this, at this point, It's going to show an error. We see an error because when you enter in, it's showing the text as null at this point. You're not taking anything out it, out from the user input yet. Okay, so you try to parse that. That's an error. So what we're going to do, we're going to comment this line first, right? To make sure that we can just display the text first by system dot out here after you user enter in. All right, so right now if I run the program here, I enter something and hit submit. You see, it didn't do anything because we didn't program the button yet. The button just just by default set new J button and show that text submit. Now how to program the button? This is the point of this lecture. So. <coughs> We have to we call action listener. Okay, the action is on click. Right, you can do on mouse hover, on mouse down, on mouse up, on keyboard enter. You don't really need the submit button too, if you want to just do enter with keyboard. Right, so there's some many action going on here. So we need to add an action listeners to the buttons. Okay. and make the button listen to the action that you do submit. So first the buttons. We gonna say this button can have the action listener. So we gonna say submit dot add action listener. Right? And you can say new a new class maybe uh, button 
event something like that I just going to create a new class named button event okay so create that class button event or you can just go down here and create an inner class the class inside class we have class here we can create another class inside the class okay and uh, let's say void button event okay so we set a actual listener and this is going to listen to implements action listener the easier way for now I'm going to implement action listener and this is called an interface which we're going to cover that but now I just want you to watch this for now okay we're going to cover what's an interface interface means you require to implement an unimplemented method which is action perform it so I'm going to make it simple by just do listen to this action so when I say this action this is in the statics Let's see Alright, so the easier way to implement the buttons should be add the action listener to the button directly and you just instantiate a new this is like a new class and then you implement the method inside that okay so this is another way to do so let's say I'm going to show you that <coughs> Then what we're going to do, we're going to remove what we have at. We don't have to worry about this. I just try to find the shortest way. Because that one will go a long way. So let me come back to this. There are several ways to do that. I just show you a few ways, but it's going to be a long way. Now, <coughs> this is the one that you add action listener. You can do like new right new let's say we got add again we got add action listener new action which is action listener itself like there you gonna call that right action listener okay now when you add at like that you are going to implement that okay you are going to implement that like action listener you're going to implement action perform that methods in there okay so make sure that we import action listener in right because that is a class so I import that in alright so I need to implement right the method which is action perform so action listener in now we going to say let me see it's supposed to open and close right so we open and close and then we only need to have this like that okay and then add unimplemented methods so the make sure you're open and close right this is just like you you try to implement the new action listener like a small class inside this parameters right which is action listener itself 
and then you just overwrite the action performed it. And this concept we start to learn when we talk about abstract and interface. Okay, and this is going to come and you see why. But now just bear with that, and whenever you want to implement something for the buttons, you just need to write something like this. That's the shortest way to do. Okay. All right. So action performed here is going to take this. This is the one one that is going to do now. We going to make it to take the user inputs by put into a string. <coughs> right. Now, of course, it's not going to know what it takes name because it's different scope. Right. Like this is just like in a new class. What you need to do is you need to move this to be outside then it's going to valid okay it's going to be valid like scope it's going to be valid and this should be the same move it outside so the scope is valid right All right. So since we are doing the statics, we have to change this to statics too. Now it's seeing it. If you leave it inside, declare inside, it's scope only by inside the main methods. So that's why we have to move it outside. And it's going to by default if it's in the same package. I didn't do public, right? Then it's going to valid in different classes because this is like new classes here. Okay. Now. We able to get a text in the name. Let's see. Yeah, this this they don't know what's name and string. That means you need to declare this outside too to make sure that we know we sharing, right? We sharing the variables. Otherwise, scope is only valid in there, right? And of course, this if you doing here, it's not going to valid different classes. Then we have to do it outside again, right? That's the scope of the variables, right? So we have to make it outside of the methods, and of course, this since we are dealing with statics, we have to change it into statics, right? Static variables. All right, so now they are happy, right? They see them. Now let's test running this. Okay, so. So what happened if I submit? Now when I submit, it's actually take the text in, right? Because the program is running this way, it's running as a sequence, right? It's not going to listen to your actions. It happened to print that right away. See that? So you don't want it to do it here, right? So you want to make sure it's going to take the text and then print out. Otherwise, it's going to just run everything down the stream, right? All right, so let's run again. Now it's going to wait. It's not going to display until you enter this, and then hit submit. There you go. Now we are you able to take the name and age, right? So in this case, we can actually when I close that lock, it's going to do the rest of the program here, right? So now we can actually at that point we go do the parsers right. When you get the string age, you can do the parser here. Then you can pretty much just instantiate the object of persons to create that from the users. And of course, this has to be share right. So I need to put it outside here. As this and change it to statics again. All right, so let's see. After that, we should be able to instantiate this guy. But of course, you might want to do it inside here. After you do the the buttons, right? Otherwise, it's going to do as a sequence, right? And then show what is this guy from the two string. All right, let's test that and hit submit. There you go. Person H1 named T. All right. 